Welcome to More to the Story. I'm Lucas Kitchen. This is a podcast special series, and we're calling it The History of the Holy Land, From Abraham to Hamas. Now, this podcast epic will take us from the biblical era to the modern state of Israel and so much in between. We'll explore the rich events, peoples, and narratives that have left a lasting mark, not only on world religion, but on global history. Episode 1 Genesis of a Nation The First Testament Somewhere around 2000 BC, there was a man named Abram, later called Abraham. He was instructed by God to leave his home in Ur and settle in Canaan. He had a son named Isaac with his wife Sarah. Isaac then had a son named Jacob, also known as Israel. Jacob had 12 sons, and each son went on to lead one of the 12 tribes of Israel. As the growing families of the Israelites expanded, they were forced to move to Egypt because there wasn't enough food in Canaan due to a severe famine. At first, the Egyptians welcomed them warmly, likely because Joseph, one of Jacob's sons, held a high position in the Egyptian government after interpreting Pharaoh's dreams accurately. However, as the years passed, the situation changed. This places us somewhere between 1700 BC and 1290 BC. The Israelites grew in number and the Egyptians began to see them as a threat. Eventually, a pharaoh who didn't know about Joseph's contributions came to power, and he decided to enslave the Israelites, forcing them to do hard labor. Moses, who was raised in Pharaoh's palace, was selected by God to guide the Israelites out of their enslavement in Egypt, circa 1290 to 1250 BC. The departure of the Israelites from Egypt is known as the Exodus. After leaving, they traveled to Mount Sinai, where Moses received the Ten Commandments and the law from God. These commandments and laws became foundational principles for the Israelites, guiding their conduct and beliefs. After leaving Egypt and after Moses' death, the Israelites, under the leadership of Joshua, moved into Canaan, which was the land God had promised to them. Joshua led them to victory over various groups living in Canaan, allowing the Israelites to establish themselves in the territory. They recognized their success in conquering Canaan as a sign of God's favor and the fulfillment of the promise God made to their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The conquest of Canaan is believed to have taken place somewhere around 1250 BC. During the period of Judges, the Israelites were led by individuals known as Judges, who weren't Judges in the modern sense, but more like leaders or warriors who helped defend the Israelite tribes against their enemies and provide some form of governance. The period of the Judges likely lasted to around 1000 BC. Saul, circa 1050 BC, was the first king of a united Israel and brought the tribes together, but his reign was troubled, and he was eventually succeeded by David.
David was not only a skilled military leader who expanded the kingdom's borders, but he also established Jerusalem as the nation's capital. After David, his son Solomon became king. Solomon was famous for his wisdom and wealth. Under his rule, the first temple was built in Jerusalem. After King Solomon's death around 930 BC, disagreements and tensions among the Israelite tribes led to the kingdom splitting into two, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. The northern kingdom, Israel, had its own set of kings, but over time it became weaker. In 722 BC, the Assyrians, a powerful empire at the time, invaded and conquered Israel, forcing many of its residents into exile and spreading them across different regions. This event marked the end of the northern kingdom of Israel, leaving only the southern kingdom of Judah, which continued to exist for a little while longer before facing challenges of its own. We'll be back in just a second, but first, let's take a short break for this. Embark on a stellar journey with Missionary to Mars by Lucas Kitchen, where danger, faith, and adventure collide in the sprawling cosmos. Meet Eustace Grimes, a spirited cyber nerd plunged into a perilous solar system where the malevolent Admiral Strafe pursues him in a system-wide hunt. With smugglers, secrets, and an unstoppable message of hope in his arsenal, Eustace becomes an unexpected hero in a tale where every orbit conceals danger. With a dazzling 4.9 star rating on Amazon, this Christian sci-fi novel invites you on a celestial adventure where humor, poignant themes, and boundless faith collide into a heartwarming cosmic saga. Secure your copy today on freegrace.in, on Amazon, or wherever you get your books. Let the extraordinary adventure unfold. Missionary to Mars. Welcome back. We last explored the collapse of Israel in the north after Solomon's death and the struggles of Judah in the south. Let's get back to it right now. After the fall of the northern kingdom of Israel in 722 BC, the southern kingdom of Judah managed to survive by serving as a vassal state to more powerful empires meaning it maintained some level of independence while acknowledging the dominance of a stronger power. However, this precarious situation couldn't last forever. In 586 BC, the Babylonians led by King Nebuchadnezzar conquered Judah. During this conquest, the first temple in Jerusalem was destroyed. This marked a profound loss and the beginning of a new period of hardship and exile for the people of Judah. When the Babylonians conquered Judah in 586 BC, many people living there were forcibly taken from their homes and sent to live in Babylon, which is known as the Babylonian exile. This was a terrible time for the exiles as they had to adjust to life in a foreign land while dealing with the loss of their homeland and temple. Despite these challenges, the exile was also a significant period for the development of their faith and identity. During this time, Scholars believe that many of the texts and stories that make up the Hebrew Bible were collected and compiled, helping to preserve the history, laws and beliefs of the Israelite people.
Cyrus, the ruler of Persia, conquered Babylon around 539 BC. Unlike previous rulers, Cyrus decided to allow the Jewish exiles to return to their homeland. This meant they could go back to Jerusalem and start rebuilding their lives, including reconstructing the temple that had been destroyed. With leaders like Ezra and Nehemiah steering the way, the Jewish community worked together to rebuild Jerusalem's walls and the temple, re-establishing their presence and religious practices in the city. This period was crucial as it marked the reconsolidation and renewal of Jewish community life and religious practice after years of exile and dislocation. As the Old Testament concludes around 332 BC, it records the rebuilding of Jerusalem's walls and the establishment of the Second Temple. The Jewish community, having returned from exile, worked diligently to restore their beloved city and its central place of worship. This foundational narrative sets the stage for the next phase of Jewish history, known as the Intertestamental Period, a time that further witnessed the community's struggles, resilience and transformation leading up to the New Testament era. Thanks for listening to More to the Story and this special podcast series, The History of the Holy Land from Abraham to Hamas, created by me, Lucas Kitchen, and produced by Free Grace International. Would you consider supporting our journey through time, so to speak? You can do that by visiting our website, freegrace.in. There you can explore exclusive content, join discussions, and become a member of our community. Subscribe to get daily, weekly, or occasional updates through email. You can even reach us through email, info at freegrace.in. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to being back with you very soon. <laughs>